Hi, I'm professional house planner Jack Thomason, and I've had the privilege of working with Shaw Floors on custom home projects for television and magazines across North America. Today I'm going to show you how to install Shaw's engineered hardwood flooring. Factory finished engineered hardwood is the fastest growing segment of the hardwood industry, and it's easy to see why. Engineered hardwood is real wood. It's layers of hardwood joined together to make it an even stronger floor. And the top layer is every bit as natural and beautiful as solid hardwood. Plus, engineered hardwoods are more stable than solid hardwood and can even be installed in basements. Engineered hardwoods can be installed using the floating, glue down, and nail or staple methods. So let's get started. Before beginning the installation process, be sure to read all manufacturer's instructions carefully. Some of the most important things you can do to ensure a successful flooring installation take place before you install the first plank. For any hardwood installation, it's important to place the hardwood in the room where you'll install it for at least 48 hours so the planks can acclimate to the home's temperature and humidity levels. Why? Your flooring will expand and contract. That's natural. But if it doesn't acclimate to the room, the expansion and contraction could be so severe that it could buckle the entire floor. You'll need to maintain a temperature between 65 and 75 degrees Fahrenheit and a relative humidity of 35 to 55% for a minimum of five days prior to the delivery of the floor, as well as during and after installation. When the flooring arrives, open the ends of the cartons and leave them stacked no more than three cartons high in the room where the flooring will be installed. Another important part of your prep work is moisture testing. Moisture under your floor can be its worst enemy. Now you can buy an expensive tool to test this, or you can easily test your concrete subfloor for moisture by taping a trash bag to the floor all along four sides, creating a seal. After 48 hours, you can check to see if any moisture was captured by the trash bag. If you do think moisture might be a problem, it will be necessary to use a more advanced test. Follow the link below to learn more. Then you'll want to make sure your subfloor is clean, dry, and flat within one eighth of an inch in any six foot section. If any spots exceed one eighth of an inch, fill them in with a cement leveling compound. You will need to remove quarter round and undercut door frames to provide necessary clearance for your new engineered hardwood flooring. The materials and tools you'll need to install your engineered hardwood, a tape measure, painter's tape, hammer, moisture meter, hand saw, electric miter saw, table saw, pry bar, safety glasses, color wood filler, dust mask, tapping block, half inch spacers, and moldings. For glue down installations, the additional tools and materials that are required are clean white rags, chalk line, chalk, hardwood adhesive, adhesive trowel, mineral spirits or a urethane adhesive remover, and a 100 to 150 pound roller. Once you've taken care of the subfloor, it's time to move on to planning your installation. You'll want to pull planks from multiple boxes to achieve an even color variety across the floor. First, you need to decide which direction to run the planks. Ideally, you should install the boards perpendicular to the direction of your floor joists. Once you know the direction, you'll decide your starting wall. Some homeowners find it easiest to run planks parallel to an exterior wall because they are often straighter than interior walls. Now it's time to begin laying out the flooring, also called racking the floor. Use random length planks from several different cartons. You'll want each row to use a variety of links to avoid a patterned appearance. Make sure the groove side of each plank faces your starting wall. It's important to stand back and examine the board arrangement in good light to make sure your layout has the look you want before you begin installation. Remember, you want to make sure you like the layout before you start gluing. Now what I'm about to tell you may be the most confusing part of an installation. We're going to determine the size of our first and last rows. Why? Because the room will look more beautiful if the first and last rows are equal size. The sign of a new installer is a first row that's six inches wide and a last row that's three. Before you start your first row, measure the room. Divide by the width of the flooring planks you're installing. How many planks will it hold? Half of what remains will be the size of the first row and the other half will be the size of the last. When cutting the first row and removing part of the width, you want to keep the side with the tongue. 
When cutting the last row, keep the groove side. Keep in mind though that no row should ever be less than two inches wide. Now that you established the layout and figured the width of your first and last rows, we're going to fit the first two rows together without gluing. Start with the first plank in the right corner and connect the second plank at the end joint. Continue this process until you reach the end of the first row. You will probably need to cut the final plank to fit. Now here's something you need to understand before you make your first cut, expansion space. You will need to maintain an expansion space of a half inch around the perimeter of the entire room, including walls, cabinets, and other obstacles. You can use spacers to help maintain consistent expansion space. Why is this necessary? Wood is a natural product and it will expand and contract slightly with changes in temperature and humidity. The expansion space will give your floor room to expand and contract. Please note that larger rooms require additional expansion space. Add 1 16th of an inch to the width of the expansion space for every 3 feet the room extends beyond 25 feet. So at this point you have your first row in place. Now you'll add the second row plank by plank, again from right to left. Connect the planks using the tongue of the first row and the groove of the second row. Cut the length of the last plank as needed. Step back and have a look. All end joints should be separated by a minimum of 16 inches in your first four rows to create greater stability in these foundational rows. Check and make sure the end joints in these first two rows are staggered appropriately. If it looks good, then you're ready to start gluing. Now gently disengage the planks you've laid in the first two rows so you can begin gluing. Hold the recommended trowel at a 45 degree angle to ensure the proper spread rate of adhesive. Apply pressure to allow the trowel to leave ridges of adhesive on the substrate with little adhesive left between the ridges. Spread the adhesive from the chalk line out to approximately the width of two planks. Place the tongue of the board into the grooves of installed boards and press into the adhesive. Maintain a six inch minimum space between end joints as you proceed. Install the first row of starter planks along the chalk line and secure into position with the tongue facing the starter wall. When the first two rows are straight and secure, spread the adhesive two to three feet wide across the length of the room. Don't spread more adhesive than can be covered in 30 to 45 minutes. As you work, remove the adhesive from the surface of the installed flooring. A damp rag with water or mineral spirits will remove adhesive. Do not use water to remove urethane adhesives from the finish. Roll and cross roll floor with a 100 to 150 pound roller at the end of installation to ensure proper transfer of adhesive. The next day, once the adhesive has fully set, you can install the trim and moldings, which are key to a beautifully finished floor. Quarter round covers the expansion gap around the perimeter of the room and gives the room a polished look. In doorways less than six feet wide, you'll need a transition piece. Use a T-molding if connecting to a floor of the same height or a reducer if connecting to a floor of a different height. These pieces create a safe and attractive transition. If you're installing the hardwood floors on stairs or at a step down, you'll need a stair nose. There are flush stair nose and overlap stair nose options. The flush stair nose is used for nail, staple, or glue down installations, while the overlap stair nose is used for floating floors. Be sure to sweep or vacuum without using the beater bar and clean the floor with a proper wood floor cleaner. You don't want to use oil-based products on your hardwood floor because it can cause a buildup on the hardwood that dulls the appearance. Store any unused materials in a dry place in case repairs are needed in the future. And remember, always use plywood or hardboard as protection when moving heavy appliances or furniture across your new floor. Then it will be time to relax and enjoy your beautiful new engineered hardwoods from Shaw Floors. Best of luck on your installation. And if you have any questions or need more information, visit the website below or contact the Shaw Product Specialist Support Team.